today. Um, that we are Plantastic uh, Cooking and Gardening. I'm Amber. I'm Nicole. And uh, today I'm really excited because we're going to be talking about our pet flower garden, uh, which is just uh, such a great opportunity to not only have a beautiful garden, but to take that garden and uh, put it in other spaces, including in the garden, yes. uh, but inside uh, doing other things with making wreaths, making bouquets, uh, and just having beautiful flowers throughout the season. Uh, so I'm really excited to talk about how to create one of these. Yeah, um, this is new. Um, as most of you know, this was pretty, this was just patio here with our fireplace last year. So this is, this is all was a new idea of how to use the space because it was the one thing when you're creating your garden rooms, I hadn't thought of, of where mm -hmm. I would put a cut garden um, in. And if you follow Florette or any of the other um, really great um, designers who grow cut, flower, cut flowers and just amazing farms for these things, um, Garden Answer, they're, they're growing a beautiful cut flower garden also. Uh, so, I was thinking, well, how can we do this in more of a suburban urban space up on a balcony, on a patio? And this space here, I would say, what would you say? It's about 10 feet long and maybe even smaller, maybe even smaller than yeah. 10 feet and a possibly about three foot deep. And the abundance in here right now that's growing. Um, you can't even see the pots. <laughs> even it's it's only been here a, a few weeks actually. Um, I forget the date. I can look and I can put up the date that we 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 put it in. Mm -hmm. um, it could be it could be maybe going on four. Um, I'm not sure if we got it done by the end of May or not. Uh, so I think I think yes. Did I? I think when we had our barbecue over Memorial Day weekend. Oh, it was in? I think it was in. It was in. Yeah. Okay. So it must look significantly more lush yes. at this point. <laughs> um, it's, it's crazy how fast the plants mm -hmm. will grow for you um, when they're taken care of and given the right soil. So we're going to go through our top tips for growing in a small space, mm -hmm. urban space like Amber has. Yep. Um, which would probably be more like on your or in a balcony yeah. or in your front patio steps, you know, along your driveway maybe, yeah. um, places like that. And um, probably in a more suburban garden, you might have a patio like this or or a decent mm -hmm. sized deck um, also. So um, where you don't have to put them in the ground. So the first tip that we have kind of goes into a lot of our other tips, which is you have to think about location. And Nicole just alluded to that as well as you have to think about where first you have space for it. So in an urban setting, you might be thinking about a balcony, a small part of a yard. Uh, I know in like Philadelphia, there's a lot of uh, like really small patios in the back of a house. It might even just be concrete filled in there, but that is some, a place that you might be able to put a uh, cut flower garden as well. So you have to think about your location and uh, one of the things you have to think about is how much light you are going to get in that space. So you don't want to put uh, certain flowers in that need a lot of light if you don't have enough light. So you really need to think about something that needs full sun. You need to make sure it gets enough sun and if you don't have that full sun, picking plants, picking flowers that can grow in partial sun. Yes, yeah, shade is not usually the best place for a cut yeah. flower garden um so but, <laughs> but definitely you can do part shade for sure uh this is probably one of our only full sun spots on our entire property is the herbaceous garden and now this cut flower garden okay so what was the second thing oh water water yeah. do you have access to water is it close to water at least where you can bucket you know with um, a pot um, and just carry the water in uh, do you have a hose it's uh, it's great if you have pots pots are thirsty they are going to need to be done once or twice a day um, into the heat of summer June you usually get a break I I'm only watering maybe every other day uh, but today I can see um, the potato vine is starting to flag okay 
Uh, so that's that's something that it's starting to perk back up. I just gave it some water and now it's all of a sudden it's that fast. It's coming back. I think it's just flagging. It, it got pretty intensely mm -hmm. hot today. Yeah. Uh, so water is, this is all in drip irrigation. So um, we may have some video that we can show you of the drip setup. I do actually have video of the drip setup that's in here. I just don't have it running. Uh, we had a lot of irrigation added to our sprinkler system and it is blowing out our fittings. There's too much pressure and they need to come back and put it on a pressure regulator. I think that was forgotten. Okay, so first thing we'll start off with is I already had drip irrigation to this point and I've just ran it along the fireplace. Right now I have stones until I can get um, something to mount through the cracks, that, that mortar sand that's there to um, hold down the half inch line. And I just ran the half inch line all the way around the patio and then I tapped into it using T's um, two per hole that I put into the actual half inch line there's one right there there's a, where I tapped in and then I just have it teeing off into two different directions just for efficiency so I didn't put so many um, holes into each and then you can further Y them off at the top I did not put the lines into the pots because what I found when I do that is one you have to have a lot of pot sitters which are expensive they're also kind of can look really wonky and because it, the lines can be pinched off under the pot but the main thing is is then when I go to move around the pots it can I'm kind of stuck to it whereas this way I can just pull it off and put this pot somewhere else and put another pot in its place. So that's the reason why um, sometimes like in a situation like this where I'm not going to see the lines because they're gonna be behind. Um, Cause when you stand back here, you can't see any of the lines. And once those plants come up, you won't see it. Uh, that's, that's the main reason why I've decided not to do that in this situation. Now the big urn, I did put it through because that's something that will be permanently there. I know I'm not going to be moving that. Um, our center pot, you can see that um, that's already been planted. And I do have a planting video for that in the urns that I will I will get to later. And I will show you the, the actual um, formula for this. And it really turned out beautiful. Um, so I will do that in a separate video. So yes, so it goes all the way around and all the way under the couch to the urns. Please excuse our appearance with the furniture and the rug. We are currently dropping the pollen packets for the oak, the oaks. So the only thing you can do is kind of patiently wait for them all to come down. Um, with white oak, you just have to be a patient person because they drop something constantly. And then we will power wash our rugs and get this all cleaned up. Um, but we're not looking our best right now and it's not worth the time okay so the second thing i did to save money and um i'm so glad i discovered this because i was using mulch at the bottom of my um is when i got the chickens this tractor supply premium pine shavings um i put that at the bottom of the pots and so that is halfway up each pot i left 12 12 inches for potting soil because almost all plants hang out on the top 12 inches of the of the soil so you're pretty much safe to do that um, with with um, you know maybe your smaller pots you might want to fill them a little bit less but that makes it much more economical to on potting soil this bag was under ten dollars for an entire bale and you can see I've not only been taking care of my, my baby chicks for a week with it, but I also have a good, probably half of that bale left um, after doing all these pots and, oh, I'm sorry, and this big barrel halfway through. It goes a long way. The next thing you want to think about is what containers that you are going to grow in. So we have 
these in pots of various uh, sizes and shapes. And the flowers are so happy. You might not be able to see down there. Um, and some of these are some more expensive pots uh, that you know we found out and bought. However, you can grow them in anything and you can upcycle anything. Anything. So, I mean, I've gone into the dollar store sometimes and seen yes. seen really like just plastic bins that Launching you could do. Laundry baskets even. You just yeah. uh, staple the plastic oh, along yeah. the top. Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah, they kind of can look cool because you can plant, like you could put strawberry plants around the bottom. Oh, yeah, that would yeah, be awesome. Yeah. Oh, no, are you poking out? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally into yeah. that. Uh, so there are so many opportunities that you don't need to spend a fortune to do this. Um, and you can also put your money towards some of the other things we're going to talk about, like really good soil yeah. um, and not necessarily the pot. And as you can see, another thing, I, I'm somebody who is a sucker for a good pot. Like I yes. really like an expensive pot, but looking at this, you can't even see the pot. You don't see them after two weeks. So, they're gone. Yeah. Like taking something plastic, painting it. Uh, doing something cool like that, you can uh, do it more on a budget. So when you think about your containers, you want to think about the space you're using, how much uh, space you have. You don't want to get a container that's too big for your space. Also, if you want several different pots, what's going to fit in that space? But don't feel like you have to go out and spend a fortune on really good pottery, even though you might want to do that. There's other options to keeping it affordable. Oh, uh, something I had completely forgot about as far as when you're thinking about mm -hmm. setting something like this up, where are you going to store your pots in the winter? Oh. Something to think about because that is a thing. Um, we just put up a small greenhouse so we do have somewhere to store, but most of our pots, we're in Northeast. Yeah. So we got, you know, 19 inches of snow just in January alone this year. So we had a cold year this year. Yeah. So pottery could get damaged. What we have found was the easiest way if you have pottery, obviously all the plants would have to be removed. You couldn't do anything perennial. Mm -hmm. But um, the easiest thing was is, believe it or not, stacking them. And then there's something called drum liners. They're like mm -hmm. big, I call them body bags. They look like body bags. <laughs> But the drum liners, you get them 50 in a box in the construction area at Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever, mm -hmm. and you stack the pots. I don't even take the soil out of them. And then you put the drum liner down. They're black. They kind of end up blending in, and you bungee cord the bottom. Kept all of our clay pots, you know, the ones that are not frost-proof. Yeah. Because if you spend money on yeah. these pots, you don't, you don't want to come out and find they're cracked. So, um, and frost um, resistant is not frost proof. Yes. And even frost proof, you have to worry. Nobody's going to, yeah. you know, in a storm, you're going to guarantee that. So, that's something to think about in your pot. So, sometimes yeah. it's just better to have the plastic. They're not going to show. Yeah. And you're going to be able to just empty them or just keep them out. You won't even have to worry about moving yeah. them. That's a really good thing to think about because I know I stack all of ours in the garage. <laughs> My husband, Greg, <laughs> does not love that. He is very protective of the garage. I don't think I'm really allowed to use it. So it's a constant conversation. He's, he's not uh, getting that it needs to also be a plantastic place. Yeah, we're working on it, we're working on it. Uh, so thinking about that ahead of time, maybe the body bags that only look a little suspicious yeah. uh, are the good they, way to go. They the work plastic. great. I, was, I didn't, was not even bothered by their look. No, I really was not bothered. Uh -huh. um, and then the, after you have your containers, you also need to think about uh, the structures that are going to help your plants grow. So most of them, probably all of them are going to need some sort of trellis or staking to help them really thrive. Um, so you can see here we have, this is probably one you can see, um, we have a trellis in the back that uh, these can grow on and will help keep them sturdy and healthy as they grow. So you're gonna really wanna think about that. If uh, this one is going into our pot in our container, so it, sorry. Uh, it no, it, it, <laughs> it, it does that, yeah. <laughs> uh, so it goes right into the pot and it works really well, uh, but you can also uh, create like a teepee kind of trellis that goes over it if it won't fit into the pot. Um, you can and use as large sticks. Yeah, and we have some bamboo poles, yeah, wire ones, and things mm -hmm. like that that mm -hmm. we can show as we go around in a closer version. Oh yes, I do. I have video of the putting on the um, oh. grow through rings. Perfect. Yeah, they work wonderful too. Okay, so another thing you want to think about, and this is one area where I say that 
you really want to invest in soil if you can get just get the best soil you can if you, you can't afford good soil then don't let that dissuade you from doing it but you this is an opportunity to really um put really good soil because a cut garden is about beauty let's mm -hmm. face it it's about beauty yes it's about bringing in pollinators but your natives your native plants actually bring better pollination mm -hmm. in. Your double dahlias don't, they can't access. Double flowers yeah. are very difficult for pollinators to access. So we're talking about something that has an aesthetic value. It will bring in pollinators, don't get me wrong. It will, but not as many as if you went and planted a bunch of bee balm or hyssop or something mm -hmm. that you see like back there. So we're talking about aesthetic beauty. So. If you want them to perform and be aesthetically beautiful, uh, that soil is like Botox for plants. It's going to preserve it, make it beautiful, mm -hmm. make it do exactly what you wanted it to do. So the best soil you can get your hands on, research. Uh, there's different brands in different areas. I won't get involved in that right now. Down the road, we, we, we could discuss those topics. But um, so you want to start with really good soil and you absolutely absolutely want to put compost into your into your pots if you want them to look lush like this in a pot immediately you want to have organic matter so you don't mix that organic matter within the soil you put it at the top of the soil and then eventually organic matter breaks down very quickly uh you're you will get worms you'll get activity in there that you want for good aeration in your soil even in, in your pots it works and so put that organic matter in there on top mulch is absolutely the worst thing you can do for any plant including your vegetable garden around no bare soil bare soil is bad so you want to get i have two pots back there that are bare soil um the hollyhocks and my cosmos and they are, they definitely need um, some mulch on them and they will flag first of any of the plants. So mm -hmm. you want to give them cool roots. Cool roots are very important. Then you wanna think about what, what are you going to, to fertilize them with? I'm more comfortable with natural products like fish emulsions mm -hmm. um, these days and I don't, I don't do them that often. Um, Weekly is recommended for a cut garden in pots. I probably do them every three weeks. So more than I do the vegetables, but more like three weeks now. I've, I've transferred to, I just don't want all the nitrogen flowing mm -hmm. through the pots, into the groundwater, and into our lakes and our creeks. Uh, it's just causing algae blooms and all kinds of problems. So think about that. Whereas your more organic products, your compost and everything breaks down slowly. It is utilized by the plants and the, and the um, microbes and all kinds of stuff that you want in your soil before it flushes through mm -hmm. and just causes problems like you have. Well, everybody's heard about the problems. It's also now a perfect time to make a switch if you're thinking about it because of production issues and it being really hard to get and more expensive. So yeah. going toward the more natural products is also right now a really great time to do that because it just makes it sense financially and just there's just not an, a lot of it around i've had the same thing of fish emulsion mm -hmm. for this is my second season so awesome. yeah no. so that's how little i use so yeah yeah so it really it seems like it's expensive when you first get it it lasts a long time you only need a little bit uh we are over fertilizing everything yeah. it's it's a nitrogen catastrophe mm -hmm. right now so uh the next thing you want to think about is once you have you know your flowers and they are blooming you want to do things that encourage more blooms you need flowers and blooms in order to have your cut garden and have these beautiful flowers in your garden and also to work with uh to cut and put in other places and make things with uh so the first thing you need to do is make sure that you are deadheading often I know that this sometimes can be a time time consuming thing, but just like having a vegetable garden, this is going to take care. So if you want more blooms, you have to come out and uh, deadhead uh, your, your old blooms off. So anything 
that any blooms that are you know dying and you know not you know past their prime you should deadhead them to make sure that nutrients aren't going to them unnecessarily and to encourage more growth uh, and then you also want to harvest often so uh, doing that pruning through is going to encourage growth it sometimes seems counterintuitive but when you are harvesting and pruning it encourages the plant to grow more as long as you're not overly pruning but there are some flowers that are going to really benefit from an initial hard prune. Um, so taking it down and pruning it low will encourage those uh, to grow. So you want to really think about your flowers and what pruning uh, and harvesting that they need to really reach their full potential. Uh, and these ones obviously are super happy because they have been harvested often and they have uh, been pruned uh, and deadheaded appropriately. I think we alluded to this earlier in the video, but you really want to take advantage of people who are experts in the field. Um, each part of gardening can be, um, can be different than, you know, growing a cut flower garden is similar, but there are things you, you, you do have to consider how you harvest. Um, a lot of people think that hollyhocks cannot be, um, used as cut flowers. Well, hollyhocks can be, but you need the, you don't, when you cut them, you don't put them right in water. Most you, you, you will cut in the morning, you'll stick it right into a glass or, or a tub of water. Mm -hmm. You'll have something to harvest it right into in the coolness of the water when the plant is ready to take that water up. But um, hollyhocks would be different. You don't want to put them in water. You want to burn off their bottoms first. It, there's a whole process, but that leads to using your experts. Um, uh, people like Florette who do this as a business, they, there are plenty of people who are experts in this field and they can help you. You can go to your library, get a book on, um, even, I mean, digital libraries. Now mm -hmm. you can get it right on your Kindles, you know, your different devices and rent a book on it and learn but um these are these are so valuable even to me of um a lot of these flowers i have grown many many times so this year particularly i i mm -hmm. pretty much know all of these flowers but i plan on getting into flowers that i don't normally grow um and also thinking about things that i don't usually use for a, a cup flower garden yeah. like herbs yeah. vines things mm -hmm. like that that I normally don't necessarily think of that is something that I forgot to add before you decide what to plant think about what's in the rest of your garden because you don't want to overlap if you already have a ton of black-eyed Susan's growing yeah you don't need to put them into the cut garden I, I have 63 65 hydrangeas on the property I don't need them in the cut garden but that could be a very mm -hmm. hydrangeas grow wonderful in pots I have blushing brides over here that have been doing spectacular and they bloom wonderful so um so think about that but your experts indispensable um books like this um you know i mean they're not only visually beautiful mm -hmm. but they have a lot of information and i particularly love this book a year in flowers because it really goes through not only in how to arrange them but also what to do with them yeah what to do to with them? them? How to care for them? Which yeah. ones do you got to get right in water? Which ones mm -hmm. do you have to burn? So you don't have to, you don't have to commit it all to memory. Yeah. This it's is like a reference book. book tool. And then our last tip is to really make sure after uh, you've created your garden and seen how it performs uh, throughout the year uh, that you reflect on that and think about what worked, what didn't, where your pots large enough uh were they too close together what flowers worked together what didn't what did you use uh what didn't you use and use that to plan for your future uh cut flower garden okay so some of the things i plan on um growing are this is a um a dahlia pom-pom mix um, more than likely these, um, these were probably propagated from seeds 
and so they um, dahlias do not uh, breed true so the only way to get true and know what they are is from the tubers themselves so these are these are kind of an economical way to get kind of a mix of different um, I did get these on sale by the way uh, because I bought them late so um, this is a Dahlia Purple Rain mix, um, five. I probably can put four in this big pot because it's huge. And then I'll put the other one, I believe in the, the herbaceous garden over there with the other Dahlia that's now coming up from last year that survived the winter in there. I never got it lifted. These are straw flowers. These are wonderful for cutting and for crafting. They are a wonderful dried um, flower because they're already dry, as you can see. Um, and also, they, they're pretty neat when they get wet. They can close up, which, you know, they'll, they'll bring up their, like, just like this. And they'll just come in and they'll close. It's pretty neat. Then I have Dahlia, Dahlia Crazy Love, which I think is beautiful. Um, I'm going to be growing from seed. Uh, zinnias grow so fast from seed. Giant double flowered canary bird. In this pot, I'm going to do Dahlia Melena Fleur. And then this really beautiful deep purple to fuchsia giant double flowered lavender. A lavender but it boy does that look more fuchsia than anything and then these are a dahlia mix again we won't know what we're going to get probably in this one i love these i've grown these many many times uh xenia state fair mixed colors and then i do plan on getting um, more clay pots and I will be growing all of these uh, Xenia fruit smoothie giant uh, double mixed colors just a mix and then the Xenia scarlet flame uh, thank you so much for watching along with us hopefully that this is helpful if you're thinking about creating a cut flower garden and is something that you can do in your space and can see that you can put one anywhere you just have to think through uh, all the steps and what you actually want to create yeah so yeah thanks um we hope this was helpful and i hope you have a great day and we see you in the next video